Um, thank y'all so much for attending um, another listening circle here in District 6. Um, today's listening circle will be on all things uh, transportation and public works related. Um, for those watching in, um, thank y'all also for joining us. Uh, my name is uh, Jared Williams. I'm the council member, and it's a, indeed an honor to be able to uh, serve and represent our great district alongside um, you all. So um, thanks again for being here. Uh, a couple of announcements before we get started today. Um, for those of you all who um, know people who couldn't make it today, um, today will be recorded and we'll be posting it online. Um, you can find that on our social media at Jared Williams TX. That's our council um, uh, page for our office. And so on every social media platform, we'll post it there. Um, also, um, we'll have another listening circle. So mark your calendars um, on uh, December 2nd from 6 to 7 p.m. Um, and we'll send out information on that as well. Um, that'll be related to issues um, uh, pertaining to public safety um, and the safety of our neighborhoods and recent incidents with gun violence um, and in general gun violence over the past year. So we'll be talking uh, more about that. So you are definitely invited to that and we definitely would love to hear your perspective um, as we can create solutions that uh, not only build strong neighborhoods but keep um, and ensure that our neighborhoods are safe. Um, also, um, this evening, um, we're going to be talking about a lot of issues, um, and also we were wanting to uh, hear from you all with um, uh, concerns and ideas that you have related to transportation um, and public works related issues. Um, if we, for some reason, don't get to get to you um, this evening, we also have comment cards. Um, and please, 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 if you have thoughts or ideas that come up today, please fill out those comment cards. Um, Kendall and I will take those comment cards. We're going to um, connect those directly to um, the, the Transportation Public Works Department, um, and we'll also be following up on that issue. So um, please do that. Also, if you haven't had a chance to sign in today, um, please sign in. That's how you get added to our email distribution list. I mean, that's where we share a lot of information about what's happening in district, including upcoming town hall events and listening circles. Um, again, I'm super excited that all of y'all are here. Um, transportation infrastructure is really important to us. Um, I recognize uh, the impact that high-speed traffic has on our district, um, the importance of having great roads and sidewalks, um, and I also understand that you know together we can create a lot of solutions. So um, thank y'all again for being here, and without further ado, um, well, one more thing, I gotta honor the host. Um, thank you so much to Hallmark Baptist uh, Fellowship for um, hosting us today. Um, we really appreciate your partnership with the district and with the city. I'd also like to thank our MPO officers who are here today. Um, thank you all so much for your service to the district and to the city. Um, you definitely um, make a world of difference here in District 6 and for our families and neighbors. So thank you all. Um, without any further ado, I'm going to hand it off to uh, Tanya Brooks. Um, she's with Transportation Public Works. Um, she'll be giving updates and then she'll pass it to the next city representative. And then we'll conclude with uh, questions and answers. Um, and uh, we'll depart from there. Um, right at 7 p.m. also, I'll have to run to another neighborhood event. Um, we have a neighborhood meeting um, tonight at 7, so please forgive me for leaving right at 7. Um, I'll have my contact information as well as um, our office's contact information um, on the back table, so please grab that. I'd love to connect with you, um, maybe even set up some one-on-one -on -one time here soon. So thank you all so much again for being here, um, and I'll pass it on to Tanya. Thank you all so much for being here. Move this down a little bit. Uh, Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you, Council Member. My name is Tanya Brooks. I'm the Assistant Director in our TPW uh, oversee our Transportation Management Division. Uh, what our division is responsible for is maintaining our city's transportation infrastructure, uh, which includes our traffic signals, our street lights, our pavement markings, as well as our um, sidewalks. We implement sidewalks. Before I start, I introduce my team, my colleagues here. I have uh, Kelly Porter, our Assistant Director, Regional Mobility and Innovation. Greg Simmons is a response. He oversees our stormwater streets and stormwater division, and Lane's our Capital Projects Officer, CPO, responsible for pavement. Right, Lane? Okay. All right, so we have a presentation. Unfortunately, uh, the technology is not compatible, and I can't show the presentation 
that I'm about to go through, um, but we've promised that we'll get it to you guys. We'll have it uh, spliced into the presentation. We'll send it to the council office and uh, we can get that distributed to you all uh, so that you can have access to the slides we're about to walk through. So if you don't mind, I'll take about 10 minutes to go through the entire presentation. I know I'm hiding behind these, these uh, microphones because I'm short. But I'll take about 10 minutes to go through the presentation, and if we can save Q&A for the very end, that would be helpful to expedite the time, and I'll have my colleagues uh, assist me with answering any questions you all may have. So the agenda, uh, we have pavement management, uh, program updates from the 2018 bond, and our proposed 2022 bond projects, and those categories are our neighborhood streets, our arterials, mobility intersection, and then transportation management updates. So our pavement management group is the group that maintains the street assets through data collection, perform condition assessments on the roadways, identify proper treatments and procedures, and prioritize funding for city programs. Uh, lanes team maintain over 8,000 lane miles in the city pavement network. Over 14 lane miles are scheduled for heavy maintenance uh, in council district in fiscal year 21. So we're almost complete with that. And then 18 lane miles are proposed for construction in this council district for the 2022 bond program. Roughly 60 lane miles will be constructed citywide in the 2022 bond. Uh, we have a chart that shows the current street assets and conditions. Um, a digital inspection vehicle drives all of those 8,000 lane miles every five years to measure the pavement conditions and calculates a score between one, zero and 100. So all of our streets have a, a, an actual uh, calculated score from zero to 100 so we can prioritize for uh, which ones are in the worst condition. Approximately 5% of our network is in poor condition or failed, which represents 380 lane miles citywide. Council District 6 has roughly 2% of those streets or 19 lane miles in poor or failed condition where maintenance is ineffective at preventing pavement uh, failure. Streets in poor or failed condition are prioritized to be reconstructed in the bond program. We have another slide with us, pavement management. Uh, in order to reduce reconstruction costs and maximize the pavement life, repair, maintenance is performed. The yearly allocation of our maintenance pay-as-you-go funding is used to prevent for preventative maintenance, uh, such as crack and joint sealing and mill and overlays of the pavement surface. The pavement condition index helps identify the proper treatments, uh, procedures for the road conditions, and prioritize funding for city programs. Um, such as our pay-as-you-go, which we commonly refer to as PAYGO or bonds. We have criteria which includes equity, service deficiencies, uh, leveraging opportunities, approved master plan, capital replacement, uh, project collaboration with our partner agencies, and um, criteria that just helps us to improve the existing infrastructure. The proposed 2022 bond funding for TPW uh, is an estimated 465 million right lane in all of our categories, which include uh, the ones we talked about, as well as our sidewalks and our uh, safety projects, safety categories, neighborhoods, tra neighborhood school safety, as well as street light uh, maintenance, neighborhood streets. Bond categories, not all streets in a project will be from one council district. We do this to increase the buildability of our con buildability, buildability of our contracts. We have completed a proposed neighborhood streets project list uh, in 2018 bond. 2018 concrete restoration. We have Martin Street and Alta Mesa Boulevard in this district. Martin Street from Ford to Shackleford, Alta Mesa from South Hewland to Whitman. And that construction uh, is started in August of 2019 and it was complete last year in September 2020. A 2018 CIP concrete restoration project on Granbury Road and Wentworth Street was 
uh, started in January 2019 and completed in October of 2020. Also, we had a 2018 Bond Street reconstruction contract for uh, Burgess Drive, Dorla Drive, Everest Drive, Albemarle, I may be pronouncing that wrong, and West Cleborn. And construction is uh, set to be complete in September 2021. I'm looking at Lane to confirm that that was complete last month. In our arterials category, over 60 arterial projects were weighted against the bond uh, prioritization criteria of congestion, capital replacement, uh, safety, crash data, equity, public health and safety. And we uh, have three active arterial projects in this council district. Those are McCourt Avenue, phase one. Uh, it's going to be a four lane divided roadway. It's a roundabout at North Crowley. Construction is set to start July 2022 and complete by December 2023. McCourt Avenue, this project was phased. So phase two uh, is set to start in July 2022 and complete the December 2023 as well. Reisinger Road at IH35 is an intersection improvement project. Uh, it's a widening under IH35. Construction started September 2020 and is scheduled to be complete uh, this month, November 2021. It's 95% complete right now. So it should be completed within the next few weeks. West Risinger Road, uh, the project scope is to construct a four lane divided roadway. The construction started in September 2019 and complete April 2021. The established corridors projects reconstruct the street and apply uh, what we call complete street concept if you haven't heard of what complete streets are, it's where we go in and not only um, reconstruct the road, but we also put in multimodal amenities such as sidewalks uh, to enhance the safety for pedestrians, bicycle lanes to enhance safety for cyclists as well. So the proposed established corridors that support transit in this, well, this is not this district, but East Lancaster, East Berry and McCourt is in this district. So those are the established corridors supporting transit. Uh, and Kelly can speak more to those after we present the, this information. Then our mobility and intersection bond projects include any change to the ge geometry of the intersection. Uh, several projects in the 2018 bond were complete. Crowley Road and Sycamore School Road completed in January 2021. Alta Mesa was completed in August of 2020. Hewland Street in Granbury, uh, that project scope was to construct a dual left turn lane to replace the traffic signals. Construction started in June 2021 uh, and scheduled to be complete in May 2022. I'm sorry, February 2022, right? Trail Lake Drive is a lighting improvement. Um, construction is scheduled to start in February of 2022 and scheduled to be completed by July 2022. Then the following are proposed for the 2022 bond. We have Forest Hill Drive at Royal Crest. Uh, the scope is to reconstruct the existing intersection and create a dedicated northbound and southbound turn lanes. Also, Berry Street at South Riverside, uh, which is a textile facility. Uh, the, it's, the scope is to construct free right turn lanes in that project. Design uh, is estimated in the fall of 2025 and construction is expected to be complete by the spring of 2027. Then we talk about our transportation management group where uh, our focus is enhancing safety as we maintain uh, our infrastructure. So one thing that we're focusing on is pedestrian safety because a couple of years ago, city of Fort Worth was leading the state number two in the state for pedestrian fatalities. 
Uh, happy to report that we found out from FW, FHWA a couple of weeks ago that we're now number six. And I'd like to think that we've been focusing on putting in sidewalks and other pedestrian amenities uh, that has put us in a better, you know, in some categories you want to be number one and others you want to be far, as far from number one as possible. And pedestrian safety being number two was not something we were proud of. So we're like six behind Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, all, uh, maybe not Austin, El Paso. I think it's about five major large cities that we're behind. So we're doing better in that category. But the way we're prioritizing projects is through um, Vision Zero. If you haven't heard of Vision Zero, Vision Zero is a strategy to reduce the number of um, crashes that result in fatalities and severe injuries. So we, uh, we uh, analyzed crash data over a five-year period um, we had over 88,000 crashes in the city of Fort Worth between 2014 and 2019. Uh, we took half of those crashes, the ones that result in the fatalities and severe injuries, uh, and we came up with what we call our Vision Zero High Injury Network. And we did the top 10 for each mode, top 10 in uh, vehicle crashes, top 10 in pedestrian crashes, and top 10 in bicycling crashes and came up with this high injury network and we're using that network to prioritize uh, projects to enhance safety for those different modes. Uh, the only high injury network in this district is a vehicle high injury network. I believe it's Alta Mesa. Yes, Alta Mesa between Woodway and McCart. Can you hear me? Woodway and McCart Avenue. We're also enhancing pedestrian safety using our active transportation plan that was adopted by council uh, back in 2019. Uh, what that active transportation plan does is look at all of the sidewalk, missing sidewalks in the city of Fort Worth and it kind of prioritizes it based on um, crash data and equity. And we're using that plan that was adopted to prioritize pro uh, sidewalk projects in the 2022 bond. Uh, the locations that we're proposing in the 2022 bond include uh, implementing sidewalks on McCart Avenue between West Cleburne to South Meadow Road, McCart Avenue from I-20 to Walton Avenue, West Creek Drive from Forego Court to Alta Mesa Boulevard, and West Creek from McCart to Forego Court. Those are the projects. Do you want to say anything about the Garden Acres slide that you put in? Is that you or Lane? Yes. Okay. I can speak to that. All right. I'm going to uh, turn it over to Lane to speak on Garden Acres. Thank you, Todd. You're welcome. Hi. Um, so recently, we've received a lot of emails and complaints about Garden Acres. So I want to address that specifically and we can talk more um, about your specific concerns about that uh, in the question and answer session or after our presentation is concluded um, so garden acres the we understand the pavement condition um, is very poor in this area we also understand that there's some flooding issues that need to be addressed um, the future state of that area around Garden Acres in the in the master thoroughfare plan includes a realignment and extension of McPherson from where it intersects Oak Grove Road to I-35 and that becomes the major arterial um, effectively making Garden Acres you know just a side street residential again um, and diverting that traffic onto that future extension of McPherson uh, that future project in the MTP um, is a large funding need, uh, large capital funding need. Um, and then when we also consider on top of that the drainage issues, uh, the, the future capital need for stormwater um, is, is pretty significant as well. And we need to investigate because of some of the new development, some of the uh, alternatives that we have for stormwater to uh, solve those solutions or solve those issues. So um, the, the capital funding need there 
is also very large. So together, street and stormwater, uh, we're looking at uh, a future capital need of upwards of $32 million. Um, so we don't have um, the capacity to localize that amount of funding in this area for the 2022 bond. However, um, it is prioritized and considered uh, when we look at all the arterials and, and funding capital work. Um, in the interim, to address the immediate needs, we are doing work in, in fiscal year 22. So we're going to be completely reconstructing garden acres from I-35 to Oak Grove Road. And Oak Grove Road from uh, garden acres just south of their block uh, where the pavement condition is, is poor. We're also doing um, a neighborhood that has poor condition. Um, it includes Timothy, Blythe Court, and Deer Run. Um, so all of that work will be com will start construction probably around springtime, or maybe summertime of next year. Before that happens, we have our stormwater operations crews out there to um, fix some of the localized drainage issues that are existing in the the bar ditches. So they are cleaning culvert pipes. They're going to actually start in um, December regrading um, of all of the bar ditches along Garden Acres. So that will drastically improve uh, those existing issues. So I think uh, that's our plan to address the immediate need and, and wait for those, uh, that future state to occur uh, when McPherson gets extended and uh, the stormwater large drainage study um, to handle, I guess, I don't, Greg can probably help me with what the ultimate goal is of their study, but uh, to, to, f to figure out what needs to be done to address the drainage long term. So that's all I have on Garden Acres. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our uh, presentation. So we're here, myself, Greg, Kelly, and Lane will take your questions and try to answer them, if you have any. I've got, I've got several of them. Is all right? Can we start? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I was taking notes. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned, sorry, this one. you mentioned rising or east. What about rising or west? When they, the west side of 35, when they put the big Amazon plant in, there's a road close sign there. And I don't know if they're going to open it back up again or not. What's the plan for rising on the west side of 35? Uh, I need to, to look at the I'm not familiar with that specific question, uh, but I can go back and look at that and get an answer to you. And one of the issues as far as traffic in that area mm -hmm. is your only egress from the neighborhoods are Garden Acres and Everman. Roger or Williams go all the way through, but at least give us a shortcut back that they've taken out. I don't know why it's, it's closed, it's temporary or permanent. That's why I was asking about that. So, okay. okay. You mentioned the McPherson extension, and that's interesting to me because I talked to the city when they put it in, that little stuff there. And the reason they, they, told, they told me then was there's a gas well that you can't see back behind there, and they can't run the street because there's a gas well there. Why did they put a gas well in the middle of where the street is supposed to go? I have no idea. But they have to wait till the gas well's gone to put the street in which makes no sense to me either. In the meantime, we have to deal with garden acres. It's great you're gonna put, you're gonna come in and rebuild it. I'm curious as to how you're going to rebuild it because if you just take up the pavement, put down pavement, it'll last maybe one year. With the number, with the volume of, of semis that drive through there and the amount of traffic that we get through there, the road right now is A, not big enough and, and B, not, built to handle all those trucks. That's where we have all the potholes and things we have now. So I'm curious what that plan is. And as part of that, are you going to change 
that intersection right next to Lutz, right where you come in, and the Pearson goes off and it goes straight because when the trucks get stuck, it backs up. They need their own lane to get off of, off of the road and not back up traffic. It also, today, this just happened to me today, when I'm coming out of the neighborhood during rush hour, the left turn light backs up into Garden Acres, and I, I don't want to turn right, but I can't because there's so much traffic backing up onto the street, I can't get to the stoplight. Recently at 35 had an accident, it was backed up almost all the way up to Oak, Oak, Oak Grove. So just putting another two lane street in there, probably not the right idea. So what, what, what's the plan for Garden Acres? Besides just, we're gonna rebuild it. <laughs> uh, so we can look at the right of way uh, that we have and see if there's any potential for us to widen a little bit at the intersection where Lowe's is, or Loves is. Um, you know, if we don't have the right of way, uh, we won't be able to do that this next year. Um, but I can, I can look at that some more. Uh, but the general scope of the project is to do a full depth reconstruction of the road. So we're gonna go 12 inches down, we're gonna restabilize the base, repair all of the, the sags and, and redding at the base, and then we're gonna come in with new pavement. It's gonna be asphalt pavement, similar to what you see now. Okay, so it won't be, it won't be a, a, con a concrete road, it's gonna be an asphalt road? No, sir, yeah. I mean, the future capital project, McPherson's extension will be a, okay. a concrete, four lane divided street. Okay. And you hit it, the last thing you did on this kind of my, my pet question. I just, those are just things I thought of as you were talking, and that's stormwater. Because you, you mentioned stormwater at Garden Acres, but Garden Acres has two different meanings. You have Garden Acres and Street, Garden Acres and Neighborhood. Okay, so when you mentioned stormwater at Garden Acres, are you referring to the street or to the neighborhood? We're, we're talking the about the, the neighborhood and larger. Okay. Um, it does extend, it covers that drainage study area correct me if I'm wrong, Greg, uh, covers both the entire neighborhood classified as Garden Acres and it goes east to the street. It extends beyond the neighborhood itself. Um, that study area is where we've seen the, the flooding. Okay. You mentioned the cost and how much it is. And I've been there for 30 years. Back in the 90s, well, 90-ish, the city was going to give us new streets, storm drains the whole bit. They got part way through and they just died. I don't know what happened, they just got dropped. Maybe 20 years ago, because I've talked to City Golf and on ever, ever since then, I was given a number of $5 million to do streets and sewers for everything. Now it's $25 million to do streets and sewers. I was just told that about just yesterday or the day before from the city. Right. If we wait, how much more is it going to cost to fix it? I mean, I know, I don't know if you guys have seen the pictures. You may have seen the pictures. I've been seeing the pictures that I have to barricade my house every time it rains heavy so the water hasn't run in. Right now, I'm tired of it. And, and it's, we need to get something out there, whatever it is, because it's, it's going to cost more, don't have the money, and it's going to be worse to go along. So I'd like to see what we're going to do to try to get that taken care of and not just keep taking it down the road because it costs a lot. Do you want to talk to that? Okay. I think Greg is going to come up here and talk about stormwater. Yeah, I'm Greg Simmons, uh, TPW Stormwater and other things too. So yeah, I appreciate your questions and certainly understand. And of course, what you're experiencing isn't an unusual thing in areas that were annexed with rural drainage and road system. And so we've got that sort of issue in many places throughout the city. In fact, we've recently been getting a bunch of emails from Panther Heights, which is another community in Councilmember Williams, which is the same sort of thing. Uh, and so those issues are very difficult to deal with when you didn't have a drainage system put in initially when the community was constructed and the city annexed it after. And so just to give you, you know, when we when we say things like there's not enough money, just to give you a little bit of context. So the, the scale of the stormwater program, we've got about 15 to 20 million dollars a year to spend on all the drainage problems all over the city. So at that level, our highest priority are life safety issues. So the primary thing that we're focusing on are these severe road flooding problems where people die. You know, in 2018, we had four people that were killed in road flooding issues. So that's where the primary focus goes. The second 
level that we go to are pipe rehabilitation. So we've got pipe systems all over the city that are 70, 80, 90 years old, falling apart, creating both flooding problems and life safety issues because that's where you have these road collapses and cars drive into those sorts of things. So, so when we talk about you know significant flooding of the nature you're talking about, again, we just the scale of our program isn't such that we can take off large projects like that. So yeah, when we did the study to try and capture the flooding in the Panther Heights community, get it to somewhere where it won't create flooding somewhere else, again, at that time was about a $20 million project. And so for a program that has about $20 million a year to spend for the entire city, we don't, we, we don't do projects that are that big just by ourselves. So what we do is try and make the drainage system that exists work as well as it can, which are the things that Lane was talking about with the bar ditches and the driveway culverts and those sorts of things, go and try to keep those working as well as we can. If there are partnership opportunities, either with streets projects, or in some cases there can be private development that's going on that maybe has to make some improvements and perhaps we can leverage our money with theirs, or if the county is willing to you know, go in, we look for those sorts of partnership opportunities again because our program is not able to do it. So, so those are the things, you know, those are, that's kind of our action list for areas like yours. So again, for right now, we're gonna be doing the best we can with the drainage system we have. We're gonna try and be alert to other things that are going on, like anything that might happen with the city's bond program for streets projects that potentially we'd partner with. If there's any developments going on that might be having to make drainage improvements that we could partner with, or if the county you know, is willing to partner, those are the sorts of things that we're gonna try and keep our eye on. But short of that, uh, that's, that's kind of what we can do right now for your area. Well, he's, he's essentially the drainage for our neighborhood is through my yard and my neighbor's yard. Mm -hmm. That's our drainage. It just runs down the street, turns that right through our yards. That's our drainage. Mm -hmm. So I, what I think I'm hearing, and I knew most of what you just said, it's more than you can handle as a homeowner department. Right. It's just too much money, right? right? So what is our what is our best option? Is it is it a bond? Because I know you need help from streets as well. Is it what? What's the best option? And, yeah. I, and I know our councilman's office is doing some things, so I don't want to know what they're doing. Just, what is the best way to get this done? Sure. sure. Well, it's, it's like anything else with the city. It's about priorities and resources. You've got limited resources, you try and take them and apply them to the highest priority needs. So in terms of options from a city standpoint, it would have to rise to high enough priority to compete with other needs around the cities. Right now, drainage projects by themselves are not on, like they're talking about the 2022 bond program, there'll be nothing on there that's just exclusively a drainage project. The stormwater program, that I run is the way the city has chosen to address drainage issues throughout the city. So it would have to be a high enough priority for us to have enough revenue in order to bite off a project like that. So were you going to say something, Councilmember Morris? Yeah, and I just wanted to say just from a council office perspective, uh, first of all, all of your issues um, are resonating really deeply with uh, uh, me and Kendall. Um, yeah, we're recording those and um, just for folks um, who um, may not know, um, from a council perspective, our, our role is really to advocate for um, resource allocation. Um, and so this issue along with the one in Panther Heights is something that we've noted not only for the bond, um, but also, you know, um, with the next budget cycle, um, working with the city manager to like um, convey how important this issue is um, so that we can work through what it would look like to help support stormwater team um, from a general fund and budget perspective. So all those things, again, are related to priorities. And um, it's definitely I don't use this word lightly or often, but it's definitely a fight. Right. Um, for, and that's something that we're willing to have a conversation with. I'm David Cook to say, you know, look, these issues are really important to um, our residents and we, we got to find some way to make it work. So um, well received, definitely heard um, and know that um, Kendall and I um, will be working to relay that from a resource perspective to see what we can do in addition to partnerships with developers um, as we have development coming in the neighborhood. So I know it's not quite the answer, but just know that we feel the same thing and, and we're working on that as well. So, sir, he was in front first. Go ahead. Oh, I'm going to Yeah, I've lived in Garden Acre since 1974. And this cleaning out the ditches sounds great on paper, 
but until you make water run uphill, it'll never work. You're digging the ditches deeper than the culvert pipe under the street. You're creating a lake and a river. It doesn't work. You know, you talk about the money you need to do this project. How much money has the city saved since 1974 when they haven't spent any money in garden acres? You know, that, there's another issue. You know, the bar ditches, uh, the corner where I live, it's stuck at stone. Um, one of the neighbors died, another man bought the property, threw a piece of metal culvert pipe in the ditch, made a driveway over it. His, his culvert pipe is smaller than the pipe up the river from him. It backs the water all the way up Stone Road across the street into the people's houses. I had, city code enforcement came out there two years ago, looked at it. Oh, this is not going to work. He's going to have to fix that. I don't know what timeline they work on, but two years is a pretty good timeline for somebody to have to dig up something they put in on the weekend. You know, the roads and garden acres, they haven't been touched other than to throw tar and gravel on them every couple of years. But yet you built probably 300 houses, you know, to the south and east of garden acres, bringing all that traffic in on the same roads. Why aren't these developers paying to fix our roads? The dump trucks, the concrete trucks that are hauling in to haul their materials, their building materials, they're tearing the hell out of the roads. But they're not, they're not paying anything on it. All they're doing is making money from selling these lots at outrageous prices. You know, the city, you're allowing developers to ruin people's, you know, the city's resources with no, con no consequences, no, re no recourse. You know, if I, was driving a, a, if I was driving a commercial truck up and down that road every day, I'm sure I would be seeing tickets or something. The city would want me to repair what I'm tearing up. But nobody's going back to D.R. Horton and these other developers to try to get them to repair what they're tearing up. You know, and I was like, I've lived there since 1974. And Garden Acres has just been like, don't hush up and be quiet over there. And, you know, it's fine. It's, it is nice that the city is finally listening to us about it. This is the first meeting I've ever heard where the city's even paid any attention to what the people feel out there. But if you, if you would go out there and talk to the people, I don't think you'd find a satisfied person who wants to live there more than five years. Thank you for your time. Thank you again for lifting up that perspective. Um, just to give you some more context, um, you know, Kendall and I, since we've been in office, um, um, we've been really concerned about, like, as we um, continue to annex and ETJs, especially for um, development coming in, that we ensure that they're um, providing complete development, um, including stormwater, expansion of roads, and that kind of thing. Um, one example of that, a couple examples of that. Um, one, um, you know, in Tavolo Park, um, there were some issues related to school zones and also um, traffic uh, signs and intersections, and we were able to work with developers to make those improvements. Um, same with um, Rock Creek Ranch, um, when developers wanted to come in um, and uh, initiate a couple of projects, uh, we negotiated them extending Brewer um, on both sides to make it um, a four lane with a median in, in between. So. Um, we, we, that wasn't the case with Garden Acres, and so that's why um, I think it's really important as a council office that we work with uh, city management to figure out how do we address this uh, situation and, and also give some relief along the way until we get to the comprehensive um, um, solution. So um, well received. Thank you for lifting that up. Um, are there um, any other uh, perspectives or questions? Yes, sir. Uh, I just wonder if anybody's explored the possibility of extending Stone Road all the way out to 1187 because the, our, we live right there where Garden Acres dead ends into Oak Road and if 35 backs up, I, we got 18 wheelers coming out of Oak Road trying to turn right on Garden Acres. I mean, you know, it, it's not big enough for that, but they do it. And just like this gentleman behind me said, I don't have a knife in the fight. He's been there since 74. We've only been there for five years. But we've seen it all right there on that corner. That's a, a great perspective and a great idea. We'll, we'll take that back as well. 
young man got killed right there at Garden Acres in thirty five. Uh, right there at Garden Acres in Oak Road mm -hmm. uh, on a motorcycle because somebody didn't stop. There were no stop signs. Mm -hmm. If they put a red light there, that'd even be worse. Because at five o'clock from thirty five to Oak Road is car after car after car, and as he mentioned. 300, 500, I don't know how many houses they built on the south end of that neighborhood, but they mm -hmm. built a bunch. And they built a bunch on the north end, and they and ain't done nothing to the streets. So we got more people coming. We got 18 wheelers blocking the, the road up here at Love's Travel Stop. We can't, home. we can't even get home. You know, I mean, it's not, it's not a good thing. And, and the city's not paying attention. People living in Garden Acres are getting tired of it. But I just don't know if there's a, if there's a, a solution to it. But if Stone Road could be run out to 1187, that could be a solution to make traffic a little less congested. Thank you for that idea. Yeah, I, I will definitely um, work on that. Like I said, um, the the Garden Acres issue is definitely a big issue that we have to address. Um, and I actually I want to create some space and opportunity for other folks that may have other transportation public works issues um, but know that this isn't the end of the conversation that will um, work with each of you actually leave your contact with us as well that way we can loop you into um, our conversations as well with city management to see what we can do so thank y'all for that I'm trying to pull everything up on my phone, my, the map, the master thoroughfare plan map, but that is part of our plan, is to eventually have Stone Road connect all the way down into Burles, and I guess to probably, don't wanna, like, but it looks like on my map about to Renfro. So you'd have a way to where from Garden Acres, you wouldn't have to deal with 35 at all. You just come right down Stone Road. Um, I don't necessarily have a programming date for that, but that is in our, in our plans. And so as we go through, as we go through these bond programs, or whatnot, we take off a little bit at a time, and as other funding opportunities come about, we take a little bit of a time and, and implement more. So um, that's that's definitely in the plan. If that wasn't transpired, how many years were we talking about before Stone Road could be sent out that way? Um, I mean, they're building new houses left and right. Right. And so there's more and more traffic on this road. So we do have a bond project that deals with that part of Stone, or Tarrant County bond project that we'll be partnering with the county on that I think goes south of 1187 it's by Sphinx on stone road so we can circle back with you as part of our answers and get that get to you when that's going to happen but that is something that's since the bond passed last night that's something that hopefully may get picked up and move forward well, that's what they're going to do because they, they, they took stone road on down two or three streets and it's right there at the creek and you can almost see 1187 down there <laughs> right yep. Right, at that, right now our, our, our goal is there's the part near Sphinx, uh, the part from 1187 up, I'll have to look at that on our maps, but Stone Road's in our, it's something I was looking at today, it's, in, it's, in our, it's on our list, so we'll be able to circle back with you on that. And one other, one other thing that could be done is right there where Deer Creek turns off a of Garden Acres Drive, they could put a turnaround there. Like a cul-de-sac? No, like a turnaround, like you can come down. Roundabout, okay. Gotcha. Roundabout. They could put a roundabout right there, and that would ease some congestion because when some people try to come off of Deer Creek on the Garden Acres or go, you know, it's just a bottom or something. Okay. Yep. Talking about extending Stone Road, I, my driveway backs onto Stone Road. Okay. That's a 40 mile an hour speed zone. How would you like your kids to play in your front yard right next to a road that's 40 miles an hour with nothing but a little a small bardage to slow the vehicles down if they do go clean the road. Well, Tony, do you have any yeah, and and there's, there's houses all, all on Stone Road. That's you know, they with their kids, the with their grandkids, you know, and there's nothing to slow cars down in a 40 mile an hour zone when your kids are right there. Yeah, well received. Um, Kendall, before we leave for today, please take their con um, um, contact information. We'll set up a, uh, another meeting that way we can dive deeper into this, that way we can get all the issues and then we can advocate on, on your behalf. Um, I do want to save some space and time for other issues um, as well. Um, we have about 10 minutes left before um, the conclusion of tonight's listening circle. And then we also want to give you all some update on other projects that we're working on as well. So um, are there any other issues related to Transportation Public Works? Yes, ma'am. Just real quick, I think I heard you say they're going to do a roundabout by North Crowley. 
But Cardinal, uh, Cardinal. Yeah. Well, I thought they said North Cross. Yeah. 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 While she's looking up the specifics, while she's looking up specifics, there where um, the city is expanding McCart South, um, and it'll it'll run into North Crowley Cleveland Road, which will have a roundabout. But they're going to get the specifics for that. One at North Crowley Creek Cleveland, and then one at. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, so phase phase one of my cart, um, uh, taking it from taking it down to um, North Crowley Cleburne, that is going to be around about there, and then looks like the same treatment at McPherson and McCart. Construct around about at McPherson, yeah. And then we're planning to send this presentation out to everybody too, so all the details that we talked about tonight will be on that presentation. What other question, questions and concerns or issues do you have? Yes, ma'am. I know it doesn't have a lot to do with the roads as far as the transportation part, but it does. All the speed bumps <laughs> that were made throughout all the neighborhoods, three quarters of the time, you can't see them. And if you just go and do this, just a little white line, and I don't speed through the neighborhoods at all. But let me tell you, even going five or 10 miles an hour over a speed bump that you can't see is not a good thing for your car. I know that may sound insignificant, but car repairs are not cheap. Right. So as of 2009, we no longer have a road hump program. Um, so we're no longer even maintaining those road humps. The one. The ones that are still existing as we have road reconstruction projects, they're being removed. Until that time, we will put in signs to indicate there's a road hump. So if you give me locations, um, we'll be happy to put in some signs. But we no longer paint them, but we will put in some signs on the side of the road to indicate there's a road hump. Road hump. Okay. So can, can we dump out the city and take out some? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> um, just to follow up on that, if um, me and um, you know our officer are really, really concerned about um, high speed traffic throughout neighborhoods and also speed humps. So, um, if there are issues that y'all see, um, areas that y'all think are in need of stop signs or areas where there's speed humps that are no signs, you can relay that to our office and we'll connect you um, with Tanya and her team so that we can um, address those. Because speed humps really don't stop the speeders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, from a from a public safety perspective, they also cause some challenges with our fire trucks and and police. So, yeah, so we'll we'll put signs there. Um, work with us. Um, send us the location that you told me. We'll we'll get working on that. Um, what other questions before we share some a couple updates? Seeing none, I'll give a quick update on some um, things that we've been working on um, to the tune of what you were just mentioning. Um, we're really focused on um, high speed traffic throughout the neighborhood. So um, again, if you if you notice areas that you think may need a stop sign, we can work with um, Ty and her team to do a study um, and to um, address that infrastructure as needed. Um, we've also been, I've been concerned really with high speed traffic along Risinger, um, along Brian Irvin, along Brewer Road. Um, and so we've been working with uh, TPW um, to study those uh, corridors and then to uh, make um, improvements there, um, including, um, you know, we even had the ability to set up speed, um, um, speed zones with police uh, cars or uh, police officers there um, to um, encourage residents to slow down. Uh, we know that they're in a hurry to work or to school or just in a hurry for no reason. And, um, we want our um, uh, first responders to um, help them slow down by giving them warnings and um, in some cases they may have to write a ticket but really the spirit is um, encouraging residents to slow down through those corridors. 
Um, Risinger is one of particular interest. Um, we're looking at additional stop sign. We're still studying that as well. Um, but, um, you know, I really think um, we need to take a look at Risinger Road. Um, I know growing up in this neighborhood, that um, has been a, a major um, um, arterial for um, folks to drive uh, mindlessly and not even recognize they're going fast. And then sometimes, like when I was a teenager, kids going way too fast. And we've seen um, and felt the impact of that um, within the last year. So um, we're looking at those major roads to, and working with developers as well, especially on the west side of Chisholm Trail. As, that, as we're getting new developments, we're making sure that they're providing um, and implementing proper infrastructure, including stop signs, et cetera. Um, for those of you who live in uh, Tavolo Park, um, I know there's been some issues related to um, a school zone uh, for Gray Hearts Lakeside um, and just the high speed traffic that goes through the school zone while families are trying to drop off their kids. Um, we, we are in the works of creating a school zone there. Um, there was a part delay, I believe, um, but um, it, it is on track to be completed. Um, hopefully this year is the, is the plan. Um, also, on the other side of Tavola Park um, with Brian Irvin, there's been improvements being made by the developers. Um, lots of you, and, and maybe those who are watching as well, um, had issues with those intersections, and there's a lot of high speed. So the developers have worked with our council office to make those improvements as well. And so um, those are a couple of the updates um, that are related to this part of the district. Um, related to high speed traffic and also making sure that we have proper traffic um, infrastructure in place um, as we continue to uh, grow as a district. So um, with that being said, thank you all so much again for um, you know coming out, sharing your concerns. Um, for many of you, some of these issues have been, um, you've been experiencing them for, for years, decades. Um, and from my perspective, um, that's not okay. And we need to um, figure out solutions together. So thank you all for lifting up those perspectives. That certainly helps us um, and our team um, work better and more diligently and more urgently to ensure that we're addressing the needs that our residents are facing every day. So thank you all for that. Um, for those tuning in, um, the purpose of these listening circles is exactly what you saw. It's an opportunity to connect um, our council office, um, city departments, and neighborhoods, and our neighbors um, around specific issues that y'all are facing so that we can get in the same room, hear the same issues, um, and work together to create the solution. So um, we will be having another listening circle um, in December, on December 2nd. It'll be related to public safety um, and gun violence over the past year, um, particularly along the McCart and Alta Mesa corridor. Um, we have um, a lot of uh, plans in work, including a reinvestment zone in the McCartan Alta Mesa corridor that is in the early stages. Um, and so please, please, please come out to that listening circle. It's from 6 to 7 p.m. Um, and we'll send out the location um, following this meeting. Also, if you haven't had a chance to sign in, please sign in so that we have your contact information. Um, if you have more issues or if you want to write your issues down on a comment card, that helps us to follow up with your issue with you and with the city department. Um, to make sure that we get it on record and that we also um, can get working on it. So um, thank you also to our Transportation Public Works team. Thank you all for um, all the amazing work that you all do. Um, I know that dollars don't go as far as roads sometimes. Um, and as a council member, I know that I'm working hard to make sure, at least from a council perspective, that um, we're, we're making proper investments in our infrastructure. It's so important. Um, to our residents and y'all are the heartbeat in a lot of ways of our city. So thank y'all for uh, coming out with, uh, with us to um, uh, listen to the concerns of District 6 and working with us to you know, make a difference in the community. So um, with that being said, that is the end of tonight's listening circle. I know an hour went by so fast, but um, I look forward to seeing y'all again at the next one. Um, and please um, don't forget to sign in and share your uh, content information with us so we can follow up on some of these issues. Thank you all again. Y'all have a blessed night. Take care.